All right, today we're playing a map sent to me by a viewer. It's a four minute long speed tech map called Florentis Internatus, and it looks stunning. Must have taken several months of work. The author time is a four minutes 44, and the world record is a 438. And I'm gonna try to beat both. Let's see how this goes. The viewer who sent this to me was the mapper, Sam. And he said he built it as a lobby map for a cup called the Alamo Cup. But I thought, you know, this map deserves to be played not just as a warm-up, as a waiting map. Uh, we need to see if we can actually optimize this. So I'm gonna go through my first run right now. And... Oh, no. Oh, no, I can already picture the comments. Virtual. How could you forget to put on the green timer? <sighs> okay, one second. I just want you guys to know you are literal addicts to this thing. There it is. I hope the video is watchable now. <laughs> Let's continue discovering this. So, I get sent a lot of maps, and please keep sending me maps in Discord. Um, I find it really fun to see what people are making, and, you know, just me playing someone's map can really make their day, which is awesome. But the reason I was drawn to this one is I rarely get to play maps that are this long. Whenever you play Cup of the Day, you're limited to 45 seconds. You play Random Map Challenge, maps can maximum be three minutes long. If you play any other format, there's very rarely maps that are endurance-based, and, and this one is. And I think it can highlight a few cool things, which is how to memorize. How do you memorize five minutes of intense non-stop driving? That is one thing. It can kind of teach you how to crash less and be more consistent, because uh, if you're going to survive five minutes straight, you cannot take the same risks as on a, a short map. And uh, generally, I think it can just be a lot of fun, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to make it educational for you guys, and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two about how you can be more consistent in Trackmania. The map is also going to be in the description if you want to give it a shot yourself and, and see how you do. Uh, I think most people can already beat my discovery run here as touching water before plastic. It's literally a, a death sentence. Driving wet plastic here. That's not something you want. But that seems nice. So far, very playable, and you have a lot of room. I think often mappers are so... Like, this is one thing for mappers, too, by the way. If you like building maps and you want to build what people consider good maps, I give a little bit more space than what you think the player needs. Mappers are very familiar with their own route, and so you think something needs to happen all the time. Like, you go from a left turn instantly into a right turn, for example. Because you know the turns beforehand. But if you place like one more block, a player who plays it for the first time will then have time to react to what's going on. And that just feels a bit nicer. Like you're not getting blindsided by a, a turn or a pillar. Stuff like that. So I'm having very little issues discovering this right now. And I'm liking it. But if it's, let's say this, easy to survive in a... Um, first run, then I think the records are going to be pretty optimized. Specifically that world record by Matrix. Jump here, nice text, plus an arrow. And we're just going to follow and tr oh, trust the arrows. Did not see that this curves this way. That works. And now ice, okay. One more ice slide. Here you can even do an ice speed slide. And try to explain how that works too. Now you have icy tires, so these drifts are going to be a little bit sharper. I love this. I wish there was some form of competition like uh, on maps like this. Can you imagine a, a knockout tournament on an endurance map like this? It wouldn't work with the Cup of the Day format. It would not work with the Cup of the Day format because you play 20 rounds of 5 minutes. That's going to take a long time, and most people don't have that much time to commit for something like this, but what if you had a format where, like, the slowest uh, players after, let's say, 10 checkpoints driven got knocked out, and then the slowest after 20 and so on, and so you eliminate more players per round? I don't know. I am waffling, but I'm also at the same time right now just trying to process the map, and I'm going to give you guys some uh, some tips on how you can more easily remember maps. One thing is to erase your vision. If you're looking down at the car, it's very hard to see what's up ahead, so... Try to look far ahead, even on your first couple of runs. 
because your car is always going to be in the middle of your screen and plan out the turns and that will also help with visual memory but another thing is to remember the track in certain parts and i'll explain what i mean by that but you don't need to remember an entire map at once you only need to in this corner know what the next thing coming up is and so the way i learn maps like this is i try to just okay when i see this i know that is coming up ahead if i see a i know i have to do b uh, very simplified my my way of thinking about it but right now i'm obviously going to be a little bit off with every corner on uh, drifts, on brake timings, on ice slides. But I got a silver medal in my first run. And now we can look to optimize this. So, uh, first jump, I want to reduce air time because this next part is full speed. Going onto the dirt. I'm going to try to get a small speed slide here and then get on the inside of the sausage turn. Also getting this wrong. Currently doing worse than my first run. I did actually uh, jump over this engine off, which evidently gains time, so that's something I want to keep doing. Now here, I didn't know where this turn was leading, so I got a little bit less exit speed through it. But now we know. Platform down here, no wall banks allowed due to the fragile. And I carry a bit more speed. Into the bobsleigh, and looking forward to enter this here already. Keep grip. Small speed slide on the exit, and ah, oh, that's a nice jump, because now you land down here. That did lose the gear. And here I kept it this time. Last time I lost it. But I think the wet plastic part, which is soon here, uh, will be the one where I can get the most. Oh! Okay, I'm gonna need one more run to remember that. <laughs> Oops. The first ice slide here. And so, on ice now, people are no longer just ice sliding anymore. You're aiming for a specific angle, and maybe the best always were, but... I wasn't, and uh, I could get Division 1 on Ice Couple of the Days without knowing this, so... It's not something that's too widespread knowledge, I think, but... There's certain Ice Slide angles... That... Whew, accelerate more than others. And the one you want is the Speed Slide angle. Where you're not 90 degrees, but you're almost there. In the next Ice part, I'll try to show it. Properly. It gains so much speed. When you hit, get it right. But I really like this. It's, um... Oh, this was the sharp one. Yeah, still not getting the drift right. That's very sharp, but we're at 13 seconds ahead. Right side of this to speed slide into this part. And then I hit a gear there. Something to watch out for next one. And then right side of this. Could try to get a little bit more speed on this cruise control asset. It's such a long part. Yeah, I lost a bit there with... And then here, for the engine off, I want to snap into a nose slide at the earliest possible time, keeping around 200. Maybe a bit more. But this is where the next... No, not yet. Soon, the next ice part is coming up. So my memory is not flawless, but I avoided crashing big time. Here. So this is the speed slide angle. And if you hold that, while not eating gears in the middle, uh, then, um, then you get a lot of time. And some people are working on an open planet plugin that will demonstrate this in practice. Sort of like plugins that show you the best speed slide angle, but you obviously shouldn't use those when competing for records. But when practicing, I think that's fine. And great, honestly. Because uh, we're, we're all going to get better at the game that way. Knowing this full speed, I'm taking a little bit more risks here. Jumping into this drift, and then following this up with a Neo slide in the uphill. And then I can full speed onto this platform. Trying not to eat the gear here. I had a friend ask me, who uh, somewhat casually follows Trekmania. Uh, and they were asking in a conversation, and it was like, what are gears? Why do they matter? Why do I hear so much about them when Trek Mania players talk about them? And it's very hard to, uh, to see when you're first starting playing, because, I mean, you have more than enough to think about just 
staying away from the walls and activating a drift. But when that sort of stuff becomes autonomous, when you just do that without thinking almost, that's when you can start thinking about what gear you're driving in and how you uh, can gain time by making sure you're staying in the highest possible gear. There's very few instances in Trackmania where you don't want the car to change gears. And it changes automatically. So when I hit 341 speed here, I get gear 5. That's uh, a very well-known number on road. And when I'm in gear 5, I accelerate much faster than in gear 4. So I want to get there as soon as possible in a lot of places. Some crashes still. 11 seconds from world record after 3 runs played. But, um, better understanding of the track. So now, I think we're ready to try to go up against this uh, Matrix record. Just for one, gotta try to skip this under now. And I gained 20 speed just from that. Nice. Oh, and look at that. Wow, 40 more speed through here. It's a little risky, I'll admit. It worked out. Okay, point 0.4 gained. You know, there's a map like this that is being worked on right now by um, Trackmania streamer SB Villa. The map is called Core, and it is 20 minutes of driving long. And I think the route is completed. He's worked on it for about 500 hours. And it is basically kind of like this, but just uh, built into sections. So you'll have an ice section, you have a dirt section, etc. Instead of just mixing back and forth. And I might want to play that when that comes out. It's a very unique uh, type map in this game. Okay, so I got more speed through here. Now the air time. How do we... Combat that. Okay, I guess just here and then. I think the crash I had in my previous run here was about two seconds worth. Yeah, minus three, four. And then. Oh, that is beautiful. Minus 420. Ah, uh, not the line, but what can you do? Keep going. That I might want to release to save fourth gear. Awesome, Peter. This is the cruise control. Oh, no. <laughs> 203 here versus 237 is about a two second time loss, I think. Yeah, one, one at least. Kept more speed here. I try to. Find out the angle to land in this downhill. If I go up close to the pillars there, I also get a better line through here. Stay low so I can get this inside ice slide line. Speed. Slide. Then this was bad in PB. I land into this downhill, it's a lot faster. More speed across this engine off, we know this now. Just how much? Even more. Even more. Probably like 280 is possible. That puts us at 4.4 seconds ahead. Still some time to gain here with the auto slide. Into Neo slide. Dirt part with a little bit awkward gear up. Okay, the jump that you just get airtime, but you try to make the most of it. And here I have more speed than the previous. This is the corner I thought I crashed. And if you hear me repeating a lot of things that I just said, it's because this is kind of how I memorize sections. I sort of give them names in my, in my head when playing. And then I know that they're coming up just based on that. But what I remember when I see them. 
And this is the turn I'm going to try the uh, dirt outside line on. Uh, not quite, but almost. That makes it a little bit more scary, but 6.4. Although it's not a great comparison since I crashed previously. Jump up here early. Risk this drift a bit. And auto slide jump on booster. That is the altar medal in fourth place. Still a little bit to go for world record, but we're getting there. Wait, excuse me? I just pressed escape. Did he drive this run with a custom car model? <laughs> Not only am I getting smoked, this guy's driving with a, uh, is that a NASCAR car? Carl Jr., the uh, five-time Trackmania world champion. Used to play with car skins like this in eSport matches, in like tournament matches. And you might think he's trolling, but no, he, he plays with this camera. This internal camera that where you can't even see the car. And because he does, he doesn't need to really know what his car skin is. So he would just drive like this on the ground. And then his opponent would see like a red Lightning McQueen looking car. Just crush them, which would have to be so demoralizing in tournaments where opponents were forced to be on. And you can look at old eSport VODs and you see this. So, um, so yeah, could be a strategy, but wow. Now, now I definitely have to beat this. Kept great speed here. Oh, I'd already <laughs> accepted that would crash, but it didn't. I'm risking too much. This video is uh, supposed to be about how to drive consistent, <laughs> and I'm just taking these insane risks to try to keep up with a yellow NASCAR car. And I think I would play better without the ghost on, but I want this to be a, a race, a battle. Oh, that's about as good as I've gotten it. Close to hitting the wall there. Did not get the downhill. That's aiming for. Go into the loop, get that. I can't get the inside line. Too slow though. 246. Should be getting closer in there. Oh, look at that no slide. Wow. Huge time gain from that.
Oh, we are running away with this. Matrix had a good start, but now I'm not so sure if he's ever going to be able to catch up. Oh, nice. Also the van. But it should still be the record. Or any disasters. Yes, it will. 43620 world record in just a little under an hour. Perhaps actually exactly one hour. And we beat Mr. Matrix. When you have engine off, uh, not sliding it will be faster than Sliding on grass. Car accelerates more, so I just gain with that. And then followed up with some clean turns. Nearly choked it in the ending. I don't know if you guys could tell, but... Uh, <laughs> there were two spots here in the ending that were extremely scary. This one, with the back wheel near the wall, that would have cost me a second at least. And then here, I had to release a lot. Slow down. Could have been a 435 if without that. And then this drift. I should not have spoken here. Look how close this was. Oi. And not even that much speed from it. But, world record, world record. And uh, I really enjoy the map. So, guys, go give it a shot. See if you like it. Stunning scenery. Fun to play. Fun to train your consistency at. And uh, we'll see how far the record on this one goes. Thank you so much for watching. And have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye.